name is Peter Zuzek, and I'm here at the Kronos booth to talk about uh, SQL and CompuCFB and the, um, how SQL is a heterogeneous C++ language. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is a little bit about SQL, about CompuCFB. I'm going to show some example SQL code, and I'm going to talk a bit about the SQL ecosystem. So if we start with SQL, this is a Kronos open standard for compute. It's a, it represents single source programming, so you have everything that, that you need to write inside a single source file, which is unlike OpenCL. So SQL builds on top of OpenCL, and in OpenCL you usually have to have a separate kernel file. But in SQL you can have it embedded into your, your own program. And SQL was designed to abstract the low-level details of OpenCL, so it makes it easier to program. And you can learn more about SQL at SQL.tech. So there are a few SQL implementations. Um, there are two open source, uh, TriSQL and SQL GTX. There's also Xilinx has a SQL implementation for their FPGAs. And uh, the last one is Computed uh, by Coldplay. So um, SQL has a um, many devices that it can run. So basically it interfaces with the OpenCL and then it can run on any OpenCL device. But it also provides a host device. Um, so this, this is basically just uh, C++ code. So if there are no OpenCL devices available in the system, SQL can just use the, the host device. And this also allows for debugging kernels because it's just standard C++. You can just step into the kernel itself. There are a few restrictions with what you can do with SQL. So SQL itself uh, is based on C++ 11, standard C++, no, no, not, no fancy stuff, just... Um, but uh, there are still some restrictions uh, imposed by the OpenCL 1.2 device. So you cannot, on an OpenCL 1.2 device, you cannot have any exception handling, recursion, RTTI, dynamic allocation, or function pointers. And the same then applies to um, kernel code that you write in SQL. So SQL is designed to handle data dependencies because the data that's, that is located on the SQL device is represented by a SQL buffer. So, and um, if you want to use that data in a kernel, you need to request access to it. Um, so another point is that kernel submission is asynchronous. So each kernel that you submit to the device is going to be run asynchronously. And because... Uh, of this requirement that you request access to the data on the device, the SQL runtime has a lot of information about when that data should be available on which device, uh, and it can then schedule it accordingly. So here we have a bit of an example that um, we have a function, filter B, that runs on a GPU queue, another function, filter A, that runs on a DSP queue, and then another function that combines these two. So this combined function runs on the um, DSP queue. But the runtime will take care that the data is synchronized. So when this queue uh, finishes, so this combine will wait on this queue to finish and it will already be on the same queue. So. And then when you request data on the host, that is also a blocking. So it synchronizes the data and brings us back to the host. So SQL is designed to be resilient to failure, um, so it handles exceptions, just standard C++ uh, exceptions, and all, also all the OpenCL error codes are handled as exceptions. Um, so asynchronous kernel error, so this is because kernels are launched asynchronously, there may occur an error at uh, some point of execution which is not well defined, but a user can provide its own uh, function that handles these errors. There's also a provided uh, fallback queue for the SQL. Um, so when you submit work to a SQL queue, you can also specify a, a fallback queue if you want. And this fallback queue, so if anything goes wrong on the main queue, um, execution uh, would fail, but um, it would be handled by the fallback queue. So the same ex the same operation would be re queued on the fallback queue. So that takes care of the errors. And all the dependencies would also be automatically adjusted. So now we can talk a bit about CompuCPB. CompuCPB is Codeplay's implementation of SQL. It consists of two main parts. 
One is the device compiler, which is based on the LVM and Clang, so this uh, takes care of kernel compilation. And the other one is uh, the Kubernetes PR runtime, which is wholly owned um, code play IP. So Kubernetes P works on the principle that it compiles the the kernels uh, that it finds inside the C++ code. It compiles them into the Spear um, intermediate representation. Um, and Kubernetes P also has experimental support for Spear V and PTX backends. So there are um, a few variants of Kubernetes P. We have the community edition, which is free to download for our website, and it's meant to, to expand the SQL ecosystem. So anyone can download it, get familiar with SQL. And then we also have custom builds that we can provide to uh, hardware uh, vendors. For example, we had uh, a partnership with Renosas for their RCAR project. So this is an overview of how how CompuCPP handles SQL compilation. So it's basically you, you get the, your C++ application, which contains all your host and kernel code. And then you basically need to determine whether SQL has an, the SQL file has any kernels or not. If it doesn't, you can just proceed with normal compilation with your host compiler, and you get the binary. Uh, if you do have any kernels, you need to um, you first need to run it through the Compute CPP uh, device compiler, which is called Compute Plus Plus, and this will produce an integration header with the binary embedded inside inside the the, the header. So, uh, as I said, this is Spear 1.2, or could, could be Spear V, could be PTX. Um, could be anything else, technically. Um, so, so when this header is produced, you can you then run the host compiler with the original application code and also the integration header, and this gets uh, combined together into the application, the final application binary. So, we can go through some example SQL codes. If we want to do vector addition, for example, in SQL, um, this is the whole thing because a bit much, but uh, basically we want we have a function add vectors. We want to add two std vectors. So we do we define two vectors. We we say add vectors, and we get the result in C. Then we don't do anything because this is an example problem. But <clears throat> so what we need to do first, we need to include the SQL.hpp header. And we also define here using namespace seal uh, SQL because it's just easier. And here, and this is our main function, the add vectors. And first, we need to define the data. So uh, we define the buffers. So we got the vectors as parameters inside, and then we just store those vectors as buffers. We define the buffers that are going that represent device data. Um, then we define a queue a SQL queue where all the operations are going to be executed on. And then we submit work to this queue. So this is the uh, command group, and this is the command group handler. So we request access to data on the device. So we say buffer get access, and we say that we want to read access to our input buffers A and B, and we want to uh, to get right access to the output buffer, which we created here, so vector C and buffer C. And so this this access modes help with dealing data, with the data dependencies in the SQL runtime. Um, then we can say parallel four, and we can so this will execute on the device in parallel. So we define here a range, how many elements do we need? And we need n elements, as we defined there. Um, and then the actual kernel code is this, just add elements, store them, so add uh, elements from A and B, store them into C. And this is automatically executed on the device. And then when you specify the return, so in this function when we do the return, all the data is automatically synchronized, so all the buffers are properly returned, copied over back to the host, and then you get back um, your vector C with all the with the necessary data. So, um, SQL is is still pretty young, and that's why we're also building the SQL ecosystem. Part of it, for example, is the Compute CPP SDK. 
basically the, these are code samples on how to use Sickle. Um, so it's made by, by Coldplay, but it also supports Tricycle. Um, we have the Parallel STL, which is, um, so the Sickle Parallel STL is an implementation of the C++17 parallel er algorithms. So C++17 introduced the Parallel STL, and one way to implement that is using Sickle. So it's basically, it's done by, imp uh, by introducing the, C the Sickle execution policy, to, um, to all of these different um, algorithms. So it doesn't support all the algorithms yet, but it supports quite a few uh, and um, the most interesting ones, I would say. Um, so, and how we do it, the beauty of this is that you just have a standard algorithm, like STD for each, for each, and you would normally just specify the begin of your iterator, end, and then what you should do with the element. Um, and here, if you want this to, to execute on a SQL device, you just specify the SQL execution policy, you just pass it here as the first parameter, and that's it, that will execute on the, on the device. So there are also linear algebra libraries like Eigen and SQLDAS, which are being uh, ported to SQL. So Eigen is fully, fully done, uh, SQLDAS is still being implemented. And we are also working on bringing, uh, on porting TensorFlow to SQL. Um, so TensorFlow is an open source machine learning library from Google. And um, here, we can, here it really shows that it's easier to port SQL than um, to port TensorFlow to SQL than to OpenCL because of the C++ approach. So TensorFlow is very C++ heavy. And there are some things that would be very difficult to do in OpenCL. And it's just simpler to do it in SQL. And SQL, the SQL port is also part of the main repository. And that was it. Thank you very much.